G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts for the second part of the... You know, and I actually hesitate to call it an April Fool's event because it's not really designed around a joke. It's actually got some rather cool aspects. So let's call this the Ironclads event that we sort of hope will actually stay. And apparently it may be. So this time we are taking on the role of the CSS Virginia and we're taking on the USS Monitor, or in fact in this particular mission we're taking on two versions of the Monitor, each one unique. This one was a lot harder than I was expecting it to be. After playing as the Monitor and taking on the Virginia, I figured making the Virginia really tanky would be really easy. However, it turns out things are not quite so simple. Making the Virginia relatively tanky is actually rather easy. The problem is her gun accuracy outside of 500 meters is absolute garbage, and the biggest weapon you can mount to her is a 10-inch cannon, which can only be mounted in the forward and aft position for a maximum of two. Your secondary guns, or your side guns, your broadsides, the maximum gun size is eight inches, and almost all of the AI-created monitors will have a minimum of nine inches armor. This does lead to some problems trying to work out how to actually be able to damage these things, and I did try a couple of different builds. My first attempt was a fairly generic ship that didn't work out so well, so then I tried something a little bit more aimed at setting fires while being relatively tanky. Unfortunately, that didn't work out so well either. So then I decided to do away with some of the armor and to do away with some of the size and go for something a little bit more nimble. Yep, that one went back to the drawing board as well, and then I came up with the design for today's video. So, what's the Virginia of today's video all about? Well, what I was originally trying to do was bypass the armor that I couldn't penetrate because I simply didn't have guns big enough outside of the 10 inches that I could mount at the front and rear by going for fire, trying to use HE to burn the tubes to the ground, because that was incredibly effective against my version of the monitor, taking on my version, or the AI's version of the Virginia. And that wasn't working so well, obviously. So my goal with this particular build was to stop using fire and start trying to use normal AP. But how do you get through nine plus inches of armor with only eight inch guns? Well, there is actually a couple of tricks you can do. One of the powder options allows for more shell damage and higher penetration. If you take the firepower option at the start rather than armor or maneuverability, you can get an additional 14% penetration there, and then you have access to super heavy shells. So, the version of the Virginia we have here has a maximum speed of six knots. It's 4,600 tons with 11 inches of side armor and an absolute minimum on the very top deck is 0.8 inches because the very small top deck is almost never hit. So that wasn't an issue. Now we've got nine inch guns rather than 10 in the fore and aft, three eight inch guns down each side and a six inch gun. The six inch gun was put in because I didn't have the weight for another eight inch and I needed to shift more of the weight towards the back because the Virginia's design is very nose heavy. That's very hard to try and keep the ship balanced. The reason no 10 inch guns is we don't need them. With all the penetration bonuses between the powder, super heavy shells, as well as taking the firepower option, the 8 inch guns should be able to penetrate nearly 10 inches of armor, providing you are close enough on your shots and you have the enemy monitors exactly side on. And that's what we're going for. With 11 inches of side armor angled at 45 degrees, as is with the Virginia, the 12 inch guns of the enemy monitors shouldn't be able to penetrate, at least not reliably. I mean, there's always weak spots that they can potentially hit and get inside, but their reload speed, the amount of shots that I'm going to get off before they manage to actually break my hull down, unless I get particularly lucky with RNG, I should be able to cripple their ships and sink them before they have a chance to actually take me out. Now to aid in that, I've also taken the reload booster option, so I'm reloading 10% faster on all my guns so I can get more shots out. Of course, there is one small catch with this. The armor on the enemy monitors, on average, and it was the case in this battle, is high enough that if they are angled to me by any more than a few degrees, 
even with the super heavy shells or the bonuses I've taken, I will not get down the sides. So what I have to do is force the broadside, as you can see here, break their ships so they stop moving, flooding the engine compartment or do really shock wherever it doesn't really matter so long as they slow down and stop moving and then stop moving myself keeping them directly 90 degrees to me and then just tanking their shots while I'm hitting them back. Amazingly it worked and it worked really well. I hope you enjoy getting it now. So now. Six inches come on. Reload, shit, here we go. We're about to get another volley out of the foliage guns. Ooh, more flooding, more flooding. Fire, and she's sunk. Alright, the Vermont is down. Well, that's the 12 inch guns out. We're only 10 minutes in, too. This, this is working a hell of a lot better than the previous. Alright. Cells turn, we gotta get close to this one. Should be fine. She's only got the nine inches, but she's got eleven inches, well, ten point three inches. Sorry, ten point three inches of armor. And we should be able to get her with a nine inch in the Ford. Partial penetration. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get through her armor. That's all. It doesn't help. Virginia is such a pig. Although I suppose that's true in real life. Although reading that apparently Virginia's turning circle, she took almost half an hour to make a 180 degree turn. She was not nibbled by any means. So I suppose that's right. Although here we go. Flooding, flooding, we have flooding. And it's in the aft section that might actually stop her. more flooding. Okay, so she should... Rudder's damaged. We only got one extra compartment. And there goes her engine. Okay, so she's not going to be able to move now. Come on. I don't know whether or not we're going to be able to turn enough here, but I'm just... Got to try and keep it at 90 degrees so we don't have an angle between us. We 
got 45 minutes to do this. I'm not about to lose another battle in Virginia. Come on. Even drifting, she's getting around faster in the weekend. The light don't appear to be moving at all at the moment. There we go, we're moving now. Okay, we're moving now. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to turn around enough here. Consider turning the other direction as if we can bring the rear 9 inch back into play. Yeah, it's going to be the go. Oh, more flooding. She, there she is. Finally. Four shots to get that. Just had to build a ship that overpens the armor by taking every penetration option we could. Well, anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you very much for watching. Um, until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care. Uh -oh.